This is a Cesar ET24 Professional Book Scanner, and we're going to be comparing it to a $6,000 Kick Click Mini. As it turns out, I was wrong. It's actually $6,300 before the service plan, which you have to choose, so it's actually over $7,000 before options. If you want searchable PDF, that's another $300. Text-to-speech, another $300. Foot pedal, another $100. It is ridiculous. If you were to fully max this thing out, you could actually get to over $30,000. That is actually insane. Compared to the ET24 Pro, which is what this is, for just over $600. And this actually includes the searchable PDF and editable Word and Excel files for life, for free, no stupid upcharge, doesn't cost you an extra $300, the whole unit is just $600 flat out. Let's see how this thing compares. Opening the box, we're greeted with this, well, pretty nice packaging. They also included this cool little tool for opening the box that was taped to the outside of the outer box, which is awesome. Let's pull this thing out. That right there is the actual book scanner. Now let's go over what features these two have, because, well, the $6,000 one probably has a few more features, but let's just go over and see what they have. First off, this one right here, it has a foot pedal, it has the fancy little button that you can plug in, and it also has a button on the unit for taking the pictures. However, over here, we have buttons on the side, we have a foot pedal, and we also have, there's usually a button on screen to also take a picture. So actually the same amount of options to take the pictures. This also has auto scan. I'm not sure how well that works. I haven't actually tested it yet, but that looks pretty cool as well. Personally though, I'd like to manually be able to choose when it takes the picture. The one thing that this has that I truly wish the other one did is these feet here. These things are amazing. You can use them to hold down the edges of the paper and then it automatically crops them out of the image, which is, well, it doesn't crop them out, it fully removes them, which is actually really cool. And I really wish this one had that, but it doesn't. Now one thing is, obviously the Kick one actually has a computer built in, so you don't need anything external, you just need a thumb drive. While this one you do need a whole nother computer, but for that price difference, you can get one hell of a computer. <laughs> now, the thing that everyone came, let's see if this thing even works, because if it can't scan a good image, it's not even worthwhile. And that's where I was absolutely blown away. Now, when we actually go to scan something, as you can see there's a little screen on here that shows you what it sees, and of course you also have the computer screen. Depending on the shininess of your book, or whatever you're scanning, you can turn off or brighten the lights that are actually on the unit, and it also has these back lights here on the back that you can turn on to shine the light on from a different angle, which helps if you're using something that might have a little bit of a glare to it. And now we're gonna actually do a little bit of scanning. And as you can see, we got our finger things here, and we can just make sure you're not covering any text with the finger things, and just hold it down. As you can see, there's a bit of a bulge in the paper, but let's just give it a test. Flip the page. Flip the page. And as you can see, our images have processed here, right here on the left. And now if we just go back, we can see all of our images and how amazingly square they actually scanned. As you can see, it uses some really fancy image straightening to just straighten the image, so you don't have that weird bulge in the actual, like, book. This is really cool and really well done. You look at these images, they're all very much readable. And if you look over here on the left, there is a ton of stuff that we can export this to. We can export to Word OCR, Excel OCR, PDF, searchable PDF, I don't even know what TIFF is, and a text document. Absolutely insane. But of course, we gotta compare it to this $6,000 book scanner, so let's see how this does. Of course, we'll select book, scan, and as you can see, doesn't exactly give you an image of a preview, so you don't exactly know what you're scanning until you scan it. So I'm gonna hit the foot pedal here. And it completely missed. It didn't line it up right. As you can see, that didn't do very well, actually. And try that again. Let's just slide this over a little bit. Since you can't preview it, you can't tell where it's deciding to put the middle of the image, which can be quite annoying, as sometimes it does exactly that. And sometimes it does it a little bit better, but we're still actually slightly off. <sighs> that sucks. But also, as you can see, it doesn't really do anything for image straightening. It doesn't flatten the page any. It just keeps the bow in the book. But it, it scans it, I guess. Time it and see which one of these can do it faster. 
unfortunately, I'm not sure when my video decided to cut out, but we finished 8 minutes and 30 seconds at scanning the entire book. Let's take a look at how that turned out. And here's all of the files, but let's get this thing exported and see what it looks like when it's just exported. We're going to search full PDF this thing. Oh, I got to select all of the images. This might take a little bit of time. I, all, there's a ton of different languages that you can export this to. Obviously, we're going to do English. And it has exported all 104 pages. I think that means I might have missed a few pages, but to be fair, the pages were stacking together some. Now, there is a glare on a few of them. However, that might not exactly be this thing's fault. There is a fluorescent light there and a couple lights there. There's a lot of light in this room that could be causing that glare that ultimately would probably help if I turn those off. Now, unfortunately, there is a few other issues. Now, I could have corrected them by just stopping and correcting them. As you can see, that one didn't go very well. And if we go down a little bit further, there's some very messed up ones here. Had I caught these, I could have just fixed them right there, but, well, I didn't. So I think what we're going to have to do is when we do this one, we're also not going to be able to go back and fix anything while we're doing it. We're just going to have to scan it as it scans it and see how that turns out. To be completely fair, because I didn't go back and rescan any of the ones for this, even though obviously a few of those were very obviously just messed up and didn't scan properly. Also, it probably was because I was flipping the pages a little bit fast. I forgot to watch for this light every time to tell me when I could flip the page. That's on me. And honestly, it's probably why these got messed up. As you can see, I was in the middle of flipping that page when it finished scanning it. Now, as for the OCR, unfortunately, it didn't do a very good job on the stuff that's on color. There's a couple of, actually, wait, what am I talking about? Actually, I didn't actually think it did, but well, okay, so it missed a few of them. So the stuff on color, it didn't do perfectly. Some of the stuff it got, looks like it got from there, and that's about it. But the stuff on the just white background, it appears to have OCR'd pretty damn perfectly. That's very impressive. I would have liked to have seen a little bit better job on the actual, like, background stuff, but hey, it seems to have OCR'd pretty well, considering how small some of this text is. It's very impressive. What did OCR did? OCR perfectly. Very impressive. And now let's see how fast I can scan this book using this $6,000 kick one. Scan it as it goes. Did not go very well. I'm going to use the finger tabs from the other one just because, well, I don't have anything with this one. Obviously, this one's not going to automatically remove them, but. <laughs> Technically, the finger cuts are cutting or messing up its cropping, that's why. So I actually can't use the finger cuts to hold it down. I have to just let it sit. I mean, it makes it so scanning's way faster, but it leaves with much worse scan qualities. <laughs> oh, hey, my virus and threat protection <laughs> is updated. Oh, it's out of date, it needs to update. <laughs> And we're done at 7 minutes and 30 seconds. So as you can see, this one is a lot faster. However, I wasn't using the finger cuts because it kept messing this thing up because it would mess up its auto cropping because it doesn't know what those are since this one doesn't have anything like that. Which is really annoying and I really wish it did. And also, as you saw, some of those really, really did not come out well. Ah, uh, <laughs> some of that was my fault. Some of that was this thing just not being good at figuring out where the center of the book is. That is really annoying. This one has a fancy thing on the computer that shows you an overlay where you need to put the book and where the center of it is. And it really didn't have any issues with that because, well, you could actually see if you had your book straight. This one doesn't do any of that. So you just kind of got to guess and hope that the computer actually crops it right. And as you probably saw, it did not for a lot of those. This is definitely one where you have to baby it a lot more and you'd have to retake a lot more of them. But we didn't retake any because I didn't retake any on this one to do a fair comparison. Now let's get this thing exported. Interestingly enough, it also got 104 pages, which I'm pretty sure this the last page said 106. So I'm not sure. Well, not even that page. That page is 105. So <laughs> I think the book is either missing some pages or there are two that are like really stuck together or something. And here is the one scanned by our $6,000 kick machine. And as you can see, our cover page didn't get cropped correctly. And the first few pages did not crop correctly, kind of because it's my fault. I use these to try to hold the pages down to try and make it a little bit help, to help it a little bit. 
but it just threw off where it thought the edge of the paper was. So the first lot of these are just kind of my fault. But as you can see, after I stopped using them, it did do a little bit of a better job, but it didn't really do a great job trying to flatten the images or even straighten the images. And even without that, it still messed up quite a few. Honestly, not near as good as it should have done. But hey, it did do the job somewhat. Again, if you were to go back through as you're going and repair them... Also, Jesus, MP3 players for $5? Damn. Yeah, this did not go very well, but it did scan it, and let's just see how the OCR did. As you can see, it seems to have done the text on just the uh, black, blank background just fine. Let's go find some text over some actual fancy... But let's go to the page that we were having issues with. The other one, I believe that was near the beginning. Let's see how well it did OCR on this. This page right here. And did it do it? It did not. We have no OCR on this background as well, so it looks like it did basically the exact same. And with that, I have a lot of scanning to do, and I think I know which scanner I'm going to be using. And honestly, I think I'm going to get rid of this one. It takes up way more space than, well, this tiny one here that can fold up very small. This thing, you can't really shrink it down, and I think you could take the monitor off, but that's a few bolts to do that. So honestly, I think I'm going to get rid of that. This thing is really impressive. Absolutely blown away at how well this thing has worked. It has impressed me well beyond what I expected it to. I expected, looking at other videos of this thing, that it would end up doing better than this thing, but I didn't think this thing would do that good. I am blown away. Now to be fair, the kick does have some things that this doesn't, Mainly, this is meant for a commercial environment. It's meant for anyone just to be able to walk up and use. It's meant for being in, like, a library or a university or something like that. It's not meant to, you know... It's not meant for home use, I should say. This thing is absolutely massive. It is 100% meant for a library. It also has settings in there where you can set up payments if you want to charge people to scan stuff. So it does have a few more features in that sense. But for personal use, that is so much better. But if you're like me and you have a ton of just old books, old manuals, old arcade manuals or just any manuals that you want to be able to just search through with, like Control F. Trust me, it is so much easier to do. Or you might even have some stuff that nobody else has online. So definitely pick one of these things up and scan in and digitize your collection. It makes stuff so much easier. Plus, you can upload it to other people so other people can use those documents if you happen to be the only one that has them. I've ran into that a couple times where I'm the only one that has them. So I love to upload the stuff and make it available. So if you have that kind of stuff, definitely check this thing out. This is the best book scanner I've ever used. Obviously, it blew this $6,000 one out of the water. So for the price, this thing is definitely impressive. Definitely check this thing out. There'll be a link down in the description. Definitely, if you're looking to scan in some manuals, if you have anything you want to scan in, check this thing out.